Hey, welcome back to the outpost. It is me, Jello, and today we are going over Salvation Wing Angel Sarevsal. This one's taking a little bit longer. I had to wait for some stuff that came out in set three to really get it to where it is now, and I'm really happy with where the deck is. So we're just gonna go over it very quickly, and hopefully you guys find this a little bit informative. So we've changed up the ride line. We are no longer running the dedicated ride line. We're just playing Tranquilia into Blaster Dark. Tranquilia gets us an extra call. If you have three differently graded cards in your hand, you can check top five to call a grade one or less card, or you can call it from soul if you don't get anything from that top five. And then we have Blaster Dark. When it is placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, you can counter Blast one to retire one of your opponent's rear guards you have to also retire a rear guard um, in order to activate the ability but yes you get to retire one of your opponent's rear guards and you get twin drive until end of turn so just a little bit more pressure in the early game uh split helm does get you that extra card in hand anyway but just having it in the form of a drive check feels a little bit better um, in my opinion. And then of course we have Sarevza L. For anyone that doesn't know the ability already, once per turn you can counter blast one to search a copy of him from your deck and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck and he gets 10k until end of turn. Then when he attacks he gets to energy blast four and choose a card from your drop and call it to rear and whatever you call gets an extra 10k. So you're getting four attacks per turn and with the support you're actually getting a lot of your resources back as well so this deck has a lot of opportunities for extra energy last usage that the other quick start decks don't have the luxury of let's get into the main deck of course we are running an extra three copies of Sarevzael to round out our playset for our persona rides we run four copies of Virocore and arguably the MVP of this deck. It was released in set one for Sarevsel and its ability is when it is placed from hand other than during the battle phase. If you have a Sarevsel Vanguard, you can counter blast one to check the top five cards of your deck. Call up to one unit from among them and then shuffle the rest back into your deck. And when he attacks, it soul blasts one to give itself an extra 5k. And if you soul blasted a Sarevsel, then you can either counter charge one or energy charge three. And this is where a lot of your manipulation of resources comes in. It's a really good solid card. And once you start persona riding, you just get to keep using your resources over and over and over again for um, just card advantage. <laughs> the combo piece in this is a single R that came out in set three. This is Inflictor Dragon. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can Energy Blast three and retire another unit in another column. And it lets you draw a card and it gives itself an extra 10K until the, until the end of turn. So it's a 23K swing. You get to draw. And as we'll see later, we do get cards that we can just kind of get for free as long as we're persona riding so we'll get into that and i think you guys already can kind of tell what that is just going off of the description but anyway the last grade threes that we run are two copies of soar swiftly to save precious lives choose up to a total of three normal units with the same card name as any of your units from your drop put them on the bottom of your deck in any order if you chose three or more cards then you get to draw a card. Um, I replaced my two copies of Divine Sister Sorbet for these, mainly for the fact that you can put multiple copies back in a single turn, and it doesn't take up a spot on your field that you could be putting something else in. So that's why, and also Sorbet's trigger conditions just made her a little bit clunky, just in my opinion. I, made me have to play the deck in a way that I didn't really enjoy. So I scrapped that and I put these two in to sort of serve that same purpose. But yeah, that's it for the grade threes. I'll start with the grade twos now. And we have two copies of Mine as Your Country's Foundation. It's a Blitz Order single R that came out in um, Overdress Set 11. It's card, a card to play it. It's almost like a pseudo PG and you choose your unit that is being attacked. It gets an extra 5k until the end of that battle. And then you get to 
call up to four heals from your drop to your guardian circle. So it bypasses quite a few things. And depending on how many heals you have in your drop, it can be a pretty good late game shield if you do get sentinel restricted or something. I think it's worth trying and just the nature of Serefsa L being able to call from the drop and most of his pieces being able to call from the deck on place or just as long as you're persona riding gets you a lot of the resources back that you would be sort of tossing over into the drop zone off of this. You can kind of put in whatever other um, blitz order you think that you can put in. I just like it because it doesn't require a soul blast or a counter blast. It's a discard and with the amount of cards that you're drawing per turn in this deck it, it doesn't matter as much. But um, yeah. That's it for that's it for that. Sorry for the ramble there. And here is um, the splash of Keter Pile. We have two copies of Spiral Cutie and one copy of um, Biscotti. I actually like Spiral Cutie much more than Biscotti in this setting. <clears throat> They're on place during Persona Ride turns are very similar. Spiral Cutie counter blasts and Biscotti lets you counter blast or energy blast but you're most likely just going to be uh, counter blasting because you're using a lot of your energy blast on Inflictor and Um But yeah, Spiral Cutie I prefer much more as if I had to choose a call target off of Serevsael, it would be my choice just because it's an extra one to hand and then you get to place the other card back on top or on the bottom. So you're just fixing the top card of your deck. You're not guaranteeing, but you are increasing the chances of having a trigger appear as your first drive check, at least. And then the Biscotti is almost the same thing. When it's placed during a Persona Ride turn, you can counter blast one. Look at the top three instead and place one on top and then the rest at the bottom. And if it was called during the main phase, basically, um, you can call that top card instead of putting it on the top and i don't like it as much because not being able to get that extra call in the battle phase is understandable but it also does take away her viability i don't want to be able to look at three potentially have two triggers on top and then only be able to put one and then have to bottom deck the other it doesn't feel as great so yes i prefer spiral cutie if i had a third spiral cutie i'd put her in but I don't, so <laughs> that's why Biscotti is there. And I'm probably going to be switching it out for this next card here, Exalted Dragon. It just came out in set three as well. When it is discarded from your hand during your turn, if your Vanguard is grade two or greater, you can Soul Blast one to call it to rear. If it was called during the battle phase, then it cannot attack, but its second ability is if your other unit was placed by your card's ability this turn, this unit gets boost, so you can just toss it into a back row corner and just swing away with it, and it guarantees that whatever is attacking in front of it is still hitting magic numbers. Because usually you'll have Viral Core and Inflictor Dragon out, and Exalted will just be behind one of them. And generally, I do want it behind my inflictor so that my inflictor can swing for minimum a minimum of 33k um or 43k if i'm persona riding which i will be so that is where i'm looking at there and then the rest of the grade twos we have two copies of resurgent dragon just as a call for when i run out of counter blast and i can't call viral cuties or uh, biscotis or this next card hammer breaking knight sadie and it just gets an extra 10k when it is called from the drop. And your Vanguard is grade 3 or greater. So if it's called off of Sarevsa L, it's a minimum 40k attack. Because it's 10k base, 20 off of Persona, 10k from itself to make it 30, and then another 10k off of Sarevsa L's call. So really good solid number there. And yes, it's just for when you run out of Counter Blast. And the next, Hammer Breaking Knight Sadie, when this unit is placed on rear by a card ability, doesn't matter from where, you can Counter Blast 1 to draw a card, and she gets an extra 5k until the end of the turn. So, on a non-Persona Ride turn, she's 25k, after the bonuses from both of their skills, and then of course, on a Persona Ride turn, she's 35, and you do get that draw as well. The name of the game in this deck is to just draw back as much as you can and just tank it out. That's the best way that I have been able to play this deck. Just tank it out and just outlive 
the opponent by shelling up and having tons of cards that you can just discard and get extra shield value off of with the mine is your country's foundation <laughs> there we go but yeah everything here is discardable um, of course you get a lot of value back from soul blasting with the spiral cutie or counter blasting with the biscotti but you you also have Exalted that calls itself, and again, you can probably just run for Exalted, or if you don't want to run the Exalted at all, then you can run um, Truncate Breath Dragons. If you don't get the added value from discarding it outside of being able to call it with Serefzel's ability, but it does give you that top deck manipulation. If you wanted to, yeah, I would say the mid range is probably running a playset of Exalted Dragons so that you just have a solid 10k back row. But generally, you only want one or two of these on the field because there are better units to have in your back row during your turn. So that's my stance on that. I did want to try Sacrosancts originally instead of the Sadies because it's a Soul Blast instead of a Counter Blast. But. Sankro Sankt has to be called from the deck to be able to Soul Blast and get that draw. So yeah, I went with Sadie instead. Moving into the Grade 1s, we have four copies of our PG. We have three copies of Forceps Angel. If you Persona Road during the turn, you can Counter Blast 1 to look at the top three cards of your deck and choose up to one Grade 3 LS unit card from among them, call it to rear, and put the rest at the bottom of your deck, and then uh, she gets an extra 10k until end of turn. So she becomes an 18k body for a counter blast and you get to call something off of top three. There is a bit of a downside of course to bottom decking something but generally speaking in terms of sequencing for this deck you want to activate forceps before activating your Serevza L search so that when you do search the, for the Serevza L you know that whatever you put down at the bottom of your deck isn't stuck there. Especially if you for example look at the top three and you see a crit an OT and then one thing that you can call. It doesn't feel great to put the crit and the OT to the bottom of the deck. So just general rule of thumb for that ability if that wasn't already obvious. Next, we run three copies of Painkiller Angel. There is a lot of Soul Blasts in this deck now. A lot more Soul Blast at least. So I haven't had as much use for Painkiller Angel, but she is a good way to just generate hand. Of course, you could go the Caterpillar route and put Saragons here. I don't think you need to. And you can probably, honestly, just replace her with this next card here in Pink Moth Girl Maple. We run two copies, and she is just really good as a combo piece for Inflictor Dragon. So when your Grade 3 or Greater Vanguard is placed during your Ride Phase, if you Persona Road this turn and you do not have a pink Moth Girl Maple on your rear, you can call this card to rear. And if you call the card, she gets an extra 5k until end of turn. So she's a 13k body on a Persona Ride turn. I usually call her, I like calling her behind the Vanguard because it automatically places her outside of a lane of Inflictor Dragon. So it, fill, it fulfills the requirement of being in a different column. And then, yes, yeah, your Vanguard lane then becomes a minimum 36k, which isn't too, too high, but it is at least there and it's consistent. But that does go up to 46k if you did Counter Blast to search for a Serum so I think that um, that number is just fine, especially because you're swinging for magic numbers with most of your rearguard lanes. And then the last non-trigger that we run in the deck is one copy of Decorazor Angel. She is a common from set 12, and her ability is pretty simple. When your other unit in the same column as this unit attacks, that unit gets 5k until the end of that battle. So you just have her behind whatever you are going to attack with first in the turn. It gets your whatever is attacking over the 13k minimum if you're not persona riding, and it also can help hit magic numbers on a persona ride turn and we'll get into that in just a little bit but yeah she just 15k overall to your field during a turn and that's split between two different attacks and i think that's really good instead of having you know four copies of forceps angel burning a t like just a ton of counter blast i might actually 
change some copies of Painkiller Angel into Decorazor Angel just to have a little bit more consistency with her because she is a one of but in the testing that I have had she just shows up because we draw so hard into the deck through the viral cores just being able to check top five as well as the forceps just being able to check top three that is the non-trigger portion of the deck we're running a martinoa just getting extra drive checks is really nice we always want a obligator dragon in the front so that's automatically a an extra triple fuck all right so we're gonna start with a martinoa we have a lot of grade threes that will be in the front row so it's just extra twin drives during the turn not much more to explain there it's just more pressure and more draw basically next we run four fronts we run four crits four heals and three draws we're running a rainbow here and for the heals i would probably put the um the 25k shield I guess the extra, that goes up to 25 if your Vanguard is a lower grade than your opponent's. Because judging from the look of things, we're going to be getting more strides in the near future. So it'll be a good time to stock up on those as well as Elementarias. Because you already know that triple drives are going to be everywhere with these strides. But anyway, that is it for this deck if you are interested in seeing how this deck works i have a replay from one of the streams that i did recently playing this deck against rezael and we did really really well against it so if you want to check that out to get a little bit more context on this then you can check the description of the video and if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for things that maybe i should try if i have the pieces for it i am willing to do it but yeah that is everything for this deck profile thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and sub and do all that good stuff if you feel like doing it if you don't that's fine too but anyway i'll catch you guys in the next one